Hello ladies and nerds, Zoya here from the StarCraft Squad. I will be bringing you game three of the series between Ghost Use XTS and This Is Jimmy from the IPL4 Open Bracket Winner's Round 1. So spawning in the bottom left hand corner as the Pink Terran, we have the man from It's Gosu, STX. And his opponent spawning in the bottom, or the top rather, right hand corner of the map. As the purple Terran, it is This Is Jimmy. Both these players are decently known. Decently known. I have no clue what they're talking about, by the way. Oh, this must be a Gri game. They must have had a stalemate. Okay, I was confused what they were talking about. Because I only have I, I have the three games for the best of three series, um, and they are talking about a game where you really think you could have won, having upgrades and whatnot. And I, it's sounding like they must have had a, to do a re game where um, their re first game three ended up being a draw. Is what it sounds like. Interesting. Uh, I would have loved to see that replay. I wish I, I wish IP would have given that to us, like game three one and then game three re game, like. That would be that would be awesome to cast. I would like to. I would. I would have been loved. I would have loved to cast that, but unfortunately, we don't have it. Gas first by this is Jimmy. He's open this way every time. Um, I casted him in two of the qualifiers so far for the U.S. Blizzard's National Championship qualifier, of course. And he goes gas first every TBT. It's yeah, just his style. SCX seems a little upset. Um, I mean, it looks like he feels like he should have won that last game, but forced a draw. And I mean, that that sucks. I it, it's horrible being in a draw. It is horrible being in a draw. I, I've done it before myself. It, especially when you're the person that, and when you feel like you're ahead, because when there's always a draw, it's not like the the sides are even. There's always someone who has a distinct advantage, but he just can't kill either of the buildings because he can't he's in more S, no more SCVs. You know, he can't do anything about it. Um, command center going down for STX. I'm going for that fast refinery. I'm gonna take a moment to explain this because a lot of people don't um, don't understand why this is cool and why TBT is so cool with this with the gas expand. So in TBP, almost nine times out of ten when you do a gas expand versus Protoss, you're gonna open up with additional racks without getting gas just yet because you need the additional marine support to hold off any form of fast aggression. In TBZ, you normally go for the double reactor. Or the double, the double factory after a gas ex not factory, refinery, right after the gas expand. Because you want to get that reactor heli out faster. In TBT though, you can do both, which is really cool. You can open it up with more racks to be able to deal with Banshee builds. You can go double gas to um, tech fast and get Vikings and Banshees out quick. And that's the cool thing about TBT is, you can do both. Like That's why I love TBT so much. It just, you can incorporate the similar build orders from multiple matchups and just there's just so much versatility in the openers you can literally do almost anything as a Terran opener and either go all in with it or expand with it it's just such an awesome matchup there's just so much so much possibility with TBT and it's why I enjoy this matchup so far so much so this is Jimmy gonna be going for a Banshee opening did he get two gas he did so we should be seeing Cloak go down first um, he might open with a Banshee we'll have to see his gas did uh, he is going for a Banshee first. He is going for Banshee first. Skipping Cloak for now. Filling off those depots. People like to do that. Just allows you to wall up that easier down here. If you need to throw down a bunker in that spot, it helps. It just gets in the way. And then, this is the benefit of getting this fast double refinery after opening gases expand. Um, he already has his, um, barracks done with the reactor. And you really need to do this right here with STX. I mean, if you're ever going to go the double refinery build, you need to build that bunker near the ramp. You need to. You have to have the bunker in case you just get a little bit overwhelmed with them all in. Um, but this is the this is the benefit of this build. You get the very fast starport. So the banshee's moving across the map. Uh, actually, no, it hasn't even popped out yet. So look at the timing of this banshee. He got this banshee literally as fast as you possibly can. Like this banshee came out as fast as you can get a banshee out. And by the time that banshee gets across the map, even though. STX did a gasless expand, he's still going to have his Viking out just in time. Now, if he went for Cloak first, unfortunately he doesn't have any engineering bay and he won't have the Raven. He'll have to do scans. But if he's doing a gasless or a cloakless version 
or a delayed cloak version, you'll still have that Viking Alice. You look at this Banshee, it's coming around now, and the Viking is going to come out right about now. And he's going to have the Viking just in time. It's just such, a ni such a nice timing. SCX Dose sees the Banshee. This is Jimmy. Needs to react properly. The Viking's here, and where'd it go? Oh, did he send it across the map? He did not want to go for that Banshee. That is just a really bad, that's really unfortunate for the SCX. Marine's going for that Banshee. This Banshee might not get away. Cloak's only halfway done. Uh, if he would have had the Viking with this army, this would have been dead by now. But the Viking's still going to get it. Ban Cloak is about a third of the way done. Or a third from the way, oh, a third away from being done. And will the Banshee get away? It looks like it's going to. Looks like it's just barely going to escape with its life. Um, so if he would have had the Banshee with him, it would have died. Fortunately, he didn't, though. This is Jimmy. Has his expansion up. Last little timing there. I, I love Cloak Banshee Expands, where you intend on getting Cloak, you don't build any Marines in the process, you get you just rush with those Banshee, you build a handful of Marines, and that's it. And then you get your CC down, and then you start producing a lot of units. Oh, the Viking just barely missed that Banshee. Oh, that is so huge. Let's look at that unit stab real quick, guys. Only one Banshee on the field before this is Jimmy. And he's not utilizing that starport anymore. Oh, he's got a second Banshee about to pop out. There it goes. Did he let Cloak finish? He did. He did let Cloak finish. Now Ghost of XCS is going to do a timing attack. Going to hit with com It's going to hit with a, a nice handful of units. He does have Siege Tech. He does have the Viking count. And this is the problem with opening Banshee builds. You're already going to be behind on the Viking numbers if they open like this. And then if you keep building Banshees like this is Jimmy has done. It's not It's not the best. Is that Vi Banshee still up there? Wow, he's got a second Banshee coming behind. I'd like to see him do a two-pronged Banshee attack. But he does have his, uh, his base being siege up. Oh, man, that was 100 minerals lost. That's huge. Banshee coming in the natural base. There are no turrets here. It's going to have a, a field day. How many harvesters will it kill? Meanwhile, contain going on. STX losing a lot of Marines here. That's a nice split so far. Like I said, he's got such impeccable micro. Banshee is cloaking. He needs to get this one up here down here. I can't believe he's completely forgetting that Banshee. This is going to do so much damage. If he would have done a double prong Banshee attack, uh, oh man, just think of it. He's still pushing forward. Remember, he's still got that Viking control. SCVs have to be pulled. He's, he's attacking with his SCVs without his Marines. That has to be a huge mistake. Just as Jimmy needs to control his better. Viking's still doing a lot of damage. 15 kills so far. Oh man, think if he would have done a double prong Banshee attack. This, Oh man, all the SCVs for SCX would have been dead. I can't believe he forgot this SCV. Banshee is coming forward. The Vikings have landed, which is going to allow this Banshee to do as much damage as possible. Marines are going down. SCV is coming forward for this. Is Jimmy. Will he be able to hold? Siege tanks are taking a lot of damage, but the Vikings did land or fly, fly up in the air. Banshee does fall. This Banshee is still up here. That's so huge. Oh, man. STX would have zero, literally zero SCVs at this point if he would have done a double prong attack. This is such a huge mistake from this is Jimmy. This Banshee has 22 kills. This Banshee would have had a million kills as well. I mean, well, a little bit of camera miscontrol there. But I can't believe this is Jimmy didn't bring that second Banshee down. Oh, that's that's so bad. That is so, so bad. Harvester count 32 to 33 to 28. So STX has still been producing a lot of SCVs. Let's look at that Harvester kill tab. 27 to 15. So just as Jimmy's killed so many more Harvesters. This is so, so huge. This is a nice push from this, the STX. Oh, but they have to use the scan. Will the Banshee get away? Nice little stutter micro there from this Jimmy, but he's not microing anymore. And the Viking does kill it off. Should have just attempted to run it away. Force more scans. Because he knows he just did a lot of economic damage. You want to force as many scans as possible. More units streaming across the map. This is Jimmy doesn't have that much of a force. If you look at that units tab, guys. He only has one Banshee, one Siege Tank, 18 Marines. His opponent has 15 Marines, 3 Vikings, and 3 Siege Tanks. Banshee popping out for this is Jimmy. I can't believe he's still forgotten to use this one up here. Oh, that, that just drives me crazy. Something so simple would have won him the game. Income tab, 38 to 42. So the harvest relief for this Jimmy is very small right now, which puts SCX in a better position, I feel. Um, his stim pack is only a little bit slower. This Jimmy does have plus one attack. I don't believe any upgrades have finished for SCX. No, he does have armor started. No weapons just yet. There goes the weapons. Stim's about the same. Just now getting started. More Banshees on the way from this Jimmy. 
And this is Jimmy loves Banshees. Like, he will build them longer than anyone else. He refuses to get Vikings. And if he does, they are in a very small number. Oh, God. Does this Jimmy even have this one keybound? No. That's probably why he forgot about it. I, oh. Oh, I know I'm harping on it, guys, but that is just such a, such a huge mistake from this is Jimmy. This game should be his at this point. Marines patrolling around the map. This is the good thing about uh, this is Jimmy and STX. They both attempt to have map vision. This Marine, of course, will fall. Just patrol on, making sure there's no third base. STX moving across the map with a nice handful of units. An important thing to keep in my eye on in TVT is a siege tank count. STX has five to the three of this is Jimmy. When Medivac's arriving, he knows he's got the air control because this is Jimmy only builds banshees. Bet you coming down to this natural base. Is there a turret here yet? No, and there's no Marines or siege tanks near here. They're just right outside, so they are coming home just in time. Bet you coming forward. He does have enough for a scan, I believe. He does, so he should be able to get the scan on this Banshee. And that will definitely fall. Two volleys. Bam. Dead Banshee. Supply guys 131 to 180, well, 115. This is Jimmy's scout. That command center being built, he did. So he did see that his opponent was taking a third CC. Now this is Jimmy's moving across the map. He's got so many Marines here that he have 1-1 one, one versus the 0-1 oh, for his opponent. But plus one weapons is about to finish for the SDX, so he won't have that advantage much longer. Unit stab guys, 7 C shanks to 5, STX having that lead still. But he has, uh, just as Jimmy has a supply lead. He's up 142 to 121. Oh, but these C shanks are getting so much damage from the high ground. STX getting a nice flank here. There's the stem, but he just doesn't have the Marine numbers to hack it. He did do just a good amount of damage there, though. He did take the supply lead. 124 to 118. Nice positioning there by the STX. Doing a lot of damage. This is Jimmy getting ready to take that third base. Third base about to finish for the STX. SCX moving around the map. Very wise. Very, very wise. He just wants to have... There's a difference between having map vision and map presence. And people tend, don't tend to realize that. Um, they think just because they have, you know, turret or have units that doesn't allow tower means they have map... Uh, uh, I mean, that's good. it's good having map vision, and that's what it is. They have map vision. But map presence is being out on the map, forcing your opponent to move around his positioning, forcing them into an awkward engagement. Just having presence on the map with your army, which is always a nice thing to do as any as any race in any matchup. Map presence is very key in this game. Third base being taken by the STX is warping it into that orbital command, and he is doing a drop right now. Nice timing on this drop. This is Jimmy up 160 supply versus 142. If we look at that income tab, 55, 54 to 45. And because this is Jimmy sticks to this more one factory style and the XTX likes to get a second factory, uh, STX will always have a better siege tank count. So it's always, this is Jimmy's going to rely on his micro more than anything. There's a drop going out at this third base, and this thing just finished, so it is probably going to die. Yeah, you are dead, sir. I am so sorry. He does lift it off. Will he be able to save it? He is sending Marines in from top and bottom. It looks like he might be able to save it. If he gets that repair off in time, it's going to be close. It is being repaired. Marines are killing off the drop of the STX. He does pick it up. Will this Jimmy be able to kill it? Marines going for the kill. Will they be able to snag it? It just barely skates away. If we look at that unit tab, there are no Vikings on the field for this Jimmy. He never builds Vikings. He says, air control, who needs that? And this Jimmy does save that third base. Uh, I thought that was going to die. That was very close. Plus two attack started. For both players, this is Jimmy's is just about to finish, so he's 2-1. His opponent's just a little bit slower, but it will be done very soon. And SCX is also getting that plus 2 armor and plus 1 siege tank attack because he, he just devotes so much time to his mech. He likes to prepare for the late game, I, and I enjoyed this. It relies more on decision making and um, positioning and, and less on um, actual micro, but it, 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 I feel like it's a stronger style. I always go for multiple factories. And this is Jimmy just prefers to do the heavy marine style, which is good because he's got he's got really great control. STX has great control as well. I'm not trying to say he doesn't. Four CC being built by the STX. Still no plus two armor started for this is Jimmy or mech upgrades. He lets his opponent get too much of an upgrade lead. It doesn't matter if he's got a, a center micro. There is a cloak banshee here going for some marines here. Viking count is very low for Ghosty's XTS. He's been scouting constantly, getting good scans on them. He can see the Viking count, so he knows he doesn't need more than three, which is smart. He doesn't need this big flower of ten Vikings to win the air battle because he knows he only needs the three. His opponent doesn't have any. 
This is Jimmy needs to be careful. He is engaging from the low ground. Both players trying to find an advantage. This is the cool part about this map is there's, there's so many entry points. You have to constantly be keeping an eye on your opponent because they can come from any direction. Just Jimmy is stimming. Will he be able to catch his opponent? He does back off. Siege tanks though. Not doing the best damage. S6 is stimming forward. He knows he has got the upgrade advantage. Plus three attack shot for him. Plus two armor about to finish. Nice siege tank volumes there for the STX. Both players have healthy medevac accounts. The STX though has a little bit more. Needs to um, set his um, medevacs to attack moves so they are healing these medevacs or these units as he moves about though. Siege tank going for both players. SCX is a little bit quicker. Nice spread from the STX. Looks like he might be able to muscle down Jimmy. He definitely will, forcing him back. Supply is 166 to 127. This is Jimmy in a lot of trouble. SCX, be careful though, not to lose all these Vikings. He's down to one more. He still has a handful of Marines, but has this huge siege tank count. I don't think he lost a single siege tank in that damage. It's 13 siege tanks to the zero of this is Jimmy. STX up 158 supply to 117. This is Jimmy is to be 40. Siege tanks are on siege doing a lot of DPS. And this is looking like it's going to be it for this is Jimmy. He's down so far in supply. Income tab 59 to 48. Look at that harvester kill tab. 15 to 30. Both players doing a lot of harassment. Is that Banshee still on the top? Oh, this is Jimmy. Losing the game because of one forgotten Banshee. Third base, of course, is being evacuated. Might not die if the green counts is kind of low, but there is that Viking work on it. That, yeah, that fight, that CC should. And it looks like this is Jimmy's gonna go try and attempt a base raid situation, but SCX does scan it. He's moving in position. He has so many siege tanks here. Oh my god, 14 siege tanks in this army. Stim forward for STX and Jimmy. STX though doesn't even need to siege up. He knows he's got such a huge lead. Unseed siege tanks do a lot of DPS. There's the GG from this is Jimmy and then leaves the game. STX wins winner brown racket of the IPL4. 2-1. Very well played from both players. Um I'm I'm impressed. Uh, I do like their I like their play. Unfortunately, I, I, I know I'm, uh, you're gonna hate me for bringing it up again, but this Banshee man would have won the game for this is Jimmy if he would have remembered it. I can't believe it's still up here. I expected him that he would remember it eventually. I hope I don't know if he ever went back and watched this replay, but oh well. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm casting uh, solo cast replays right now because of the IPL5 caster contest. They want you to solo cast a replay and submit it. And um, I just haven't solo cast in such a long time. I used to cast for YouTube all the time. As you guys know, this is why I have so many subscribers. And I just kind of died off. So hopefully I don't let that happen again. Even after the IPL5 caster contest, I'm going to keep trying to do solo cast for you guys. Um, I, I, I should I, I always do this to you guys. I always just kind of say, oh, okay, I'm too busy and I abandon you. Hopefully this doesn't happen again, though. But... We'll have to see. Um, so, guys, please follow me on Twitter, twittercom StarCraft. Please follow, subscribe here if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber. youtubecom StarCraft Squad. Um, you can find me on Playhem TV um, over at Playhem. We do two daily tournaments in EU and NA daily. Um, we cast them, Master League players play, and then we have a lot of top Koreans, a lot of top GM players that play, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I cast every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. It starts at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard. I cast Wednesday mornings as well. Starts at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. Pacific. And I also do the Zoya show, Monday through Thursday. It starts at the end of the NA Daily, which usually ends between 9 and 10 p.m. Pacific time. And I also cast Friday mornings for the EU Daily at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you can catch me all there. And then I also tweet whenever I'm doing other tournaments. I also cast the KSL, which is the Korean StarCraft uh, League. Um, they're currently doing the team league right now. I cast the Esports Weekly Match, which is a quote qualifier. And I also cast for my team, so just follow me around and you can see when I cast. But thank you for watching this best of three series. Remember, I am doing these casts for the IPL5 caster contest, or I'm just trying to get a little bit better right now. So please leave any advice in the comments below, just suggestions, ways to improve. Let me know what you guys think because uh, I'm pretty rusty with my solo cast, and I would really like to, you know, get, you know, like be one of the casters that wins this contest. So thank you guys for uh, watching, and I'll see you guys next time.